Now then, how are you doing? Today, we're going to talk about the terrible, terrible fate of some records imported into Japan from the United States. Now, when Elvis died in 1977, there was naturally a lot of interest in his music again here in Japan. And many of the albums were re-released, such as this one here. Now you can see the orange colored obi there. So there were 15 albums re-released uh, in this series here. Uh, it contained eight of the 50s albums, Golden Records Volume 3, called Records Volume 4, uh, Elvis is Back, Something for Everybody, Potluck, G.I. Blues, and Funny Nakapulco. However, many of the soundtracks uh, were still unavailable in Japan. So that meant that a lot of them were imported into Japan from America. But when they got here, some of them suffered a terrible, terrible fate. So, as many of you probably know, Elvis's records in Japan were released initially on the Victor label, owned by the Victor Company of Japan. So when RCA switched to the Orange, RCA Victor in America switched to the Orange label in 1968, um, the Victor Company of Japan, or as we know it, JVC, they licensed the Orange RCA label. And here's uh, a copy of a Japanese 1970s album, and you can see it's just RCA. So there's no Victor, and there's no Nipper the dog. However, when Elvis died in 1977, um, RCA Victor had gone back to using the Nipper logo and the old black label. So here's a copy of Roustabout from 1977 and you can clearly see the um, Nipper logo and the Victor logo as well. So when records like this were imported into Japan there was a problem. Well in fact there were two problems. Nipper the dog and the Victor logo. Something had to be done about those. So today I'm going to show you what happened. All right, so let's look at some of these imported albums and what happened to them. If you're of a nervous disposition, you may wish to switch off now. Here I'm scared. So this uh, is a 1977 reissue, and uh, on some of the 77 reissues, there's no Victor on the cover. It just says RCA on the uh, AFL, uh, APL1 catalog number series, I think. So this is a nice, clean cover, still in the shrink wrap. And it comes with its generic Elvis inner sleeve. So far, so good. Usual split end or split seams. However, when you look at the record, look at that. There's no nipper and there's no Victor. So what did they do? Well, you might not be able to see this, but what they did was they cut out the nipper logo and the Victor logo. So if you just touch the label, it's just a, a rough white patch. But that was not the only approach they took. Here's a copy of Clambake from the same era. And again, this has no Victor on the front cover. So that's a nice clean cover still in the shrink wrap. However, if we look at the album, originally, the label design was the same as the one I just showed you, but here you can see there are actually stickers. There's a great big RCA sticker at the top, and then on the left side of the labels there's a little black sticker covering the Victor logo. And this was not just uh, limited to 1977 releases, there's a 1979 album, is it? 79, 80, something around that time. Um, our Memories of Elvis, nice clean cover, but the record is different again. So what they've done with this one is they used black marker to cover up Nipper and the Victor logo. Some of the reissues, 1977 reissues, however, did have Victor on the front cover, RCA Victor, and uh, here's an example of what happened. 
There's a copy of Speedway and in the top right corner you can see an RCA sticker covering the Victor logo. For some reason it's upside down. This one also has the standard Elvis in a sleeve, but if you look closely you can see also that uh, the Victor logo has been censored on the inner sleeve as well. So somebody has taken a black marker and uh, crossed out the Victor logo on every single cover which has the Victor logo on it. And what did they do with the record? Well this one is uh, different again. This one has RCA stickers, a round sticker over Nipper and a rectangular sticker over Victor. A slightly earlier one is this copy of Gold Records Volume 4 and uh, you can see here the Victor has simply been crossed out with a black marker. Also on the back cover the um, pictures of the other Elvis albums also have the Victor logo crossed out in black pen. The inner sleeve, however, has escaped the sensor on this occasion. This one is undamaged. And the record again has a slightly different look to the other ones I showed you. You can see there's a silver sticker over the Victor logo and it has some Japanese text um, but that just says import on it. So those were the uh, records which were imported around about the time of Elvis's death. Uh, one or two of them perhaps just slightly before and some just after. Uh, let's have a look at some albums which were imported before Elvis died. So here we have um, Madison Square Garden. I'm not sure when or why this would have been imported because uh, the album was released in Japan in 1972 and as far as I'm aware it was on catalogue right through the 70s and into the 1980s. So perhaps um, the album was uh, ordered by people who wanted to get the American copy earlier. Uh, if there was a delay between the American copy and the Japanese copy, I, I really don't know. So if you look at the top left corner here, you can see there's a little white patch here. Uh, and you can see that the shrink is also ripped. And uh, there was originally a sticker there covering up the Victor logo. And somebody has caused some damage by removing that sticker. Going back earlier than Madison Square Garden is this copy of uh, Something for Everybody. Now if you look um, at the top right corner, you can see a great big rectangular piece of the cover has been cut away where the Victor logo was and on the back cover again the advertisements for the three other Elvis albums the Victor logo has just been cut away with a knife. And this is a flexible vinyl pressing um, on the orange label and the labels again that's just a big uh, patch here where the Victor logo was. This is the inner sleeve that came with that album and you can see the latest album is uh, Love Letters so probably this was released in 1971. This is the most stickered of all the covers. Uh, this is a copy of Golden Records Volume 3 from about 1968 or 69 I think and um, you can see on the front and the back the Victor logo has been covered up in each and every case by these big gold RCA stickers. It comes with its uh, original RCA in a sleeve and the record itself. You can see the orange label, it's got the grooves around the outside of the labels so it's pro probably one of the first orange label pressings. Stiff vinyl and the Victor logo here has been covered up with a gold sticker. And going back a little bit further, here is um, Gold Records Volume 4. And here again you can see the same gold, big gold sticker covering up the Victor logo. The back cover has escaped any censorship. That's quite a nice, nice cover. It would be a lovely cover if it weren't for that RCA sticker. And it comes with its original inner sleeve the blue RCA in a sleeve with the latest album here being Spin Out. 
and again you can see more stickers here RCA sticker covering up the RCA Victor logo and also on the left here your RCA dealer RCA Victor dealer RCA Victor has been covered up however they didn't cover up this one here on the back side it says RCA Victor they missed that one so this is an original black label pressing and you can see at the top of the label is a great big RCA sticker From about the same period is Blue Hawaii, and again at the top you can see a, a gold RCA sticker covering up RCA Victor. Back cover is nice and clean. These are really nice clean covers, it's such a shame about the stickers. Uh, it has exactly the same blue in a sleeve, which makes me think it's probably from the same late 60s period, and it has the same RCA sticker over the top of the label and I've just got one more to show you this is GI Blues and it has the same sticker as Blue Hawaii somebody has tried to remove the sticker and made a hash of it that cover is nice and clean no damage there and once again it has the blue in a sleeve with Spin Out being the latest album um, but they haven't done a very thorough job here. They've got one sticker here at the top, but they've missed RCA Victor on the left, and they've missed it on the bottom again on this side. And once again, this is a black label pressing. I think this is also from the late, uh, about 1967 68, with the black RCA sticker over the label. And just to show you that it was nothing personal, it wasn't that uh, somebody has something against Elvis, here's another album with the same problem. This is uh, a Miles Davis album from 1969, and this is on the Columbia label, it's not on RCA. But if you look uh, here, in the top left corner, and on the top right corner at the back, you can see that the Columbia label, uh, Columbia I logo, uh, has been cut out with a knife and this also extends to the inner sleeve uh, bottom right here so the Columbia eye has been blacked out and they've also done a thorough job because they've cut out the eyes on the label on the labels as well so as I showed you at the beginning, the Roustabout album from 1977 was perfect. There was no stickers and no cutouts on that. So why some of them uh, escaped the censor and some did not, I have no idea. But uh, this is what happened to many Elvis records which were imported into Japan from, it seems, at least the late 1960s until after uh, he died. For some reason I enjoy collecting these, uh, but it may have been painful for some of you. Um, not too painful, I hope. Thanks for watching.